and uh, you know we'll get into why that is so important. If you don't already know, and if I'm not beating a dead horse uh, in just a moment as we start uh, this build process, so uh, let's continue. And what you're looking at on the floor, on the work floor, is the DESA Becker clone disassembled, and you have to do it very carefully as not to tweak the metal and pop out the rivets and all that, but it's a necessary evil. This glove will be disassembled and reassembled uh, as I build each glove, um, switching light here just to kind of get a little bit more of a detail. And, uh, you know, get, er, really quickly, earlier I'd mentioned about keeping things on hand <clears throat> just for reference, and I'm going to kind of do a callback to that in a second and show you why. You're only as good as your last, you know, shaped piece of metal, I guess, and uh, it's why I'm so meticulous about keeping all my reference at a glance. And, you know, a lot of people use their computer screens to pull up their reference, and that's fine. I do occasionally, but I really like to have the hard copy printout. So here we are looking at the, uh, the disassembled glove, and I'm going to show you a lot of this right now. I'm going to give you some angles that might not be anywhere else, but let's let's do this callback really quickly. Here is uh, my pre-Becker clone DESA middle knuckle, and here's the Becker clone DESA middle knuckle. And what we're looking at is right in front at the leading edge of the rivet area. Uh, the difference in shape, which is very subtle. My old one had more of a kind of a pointed teardrop whereas the new one is uh, significantly more rounded. But everything else is virtually the same. And uh, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I keep both on hand um, to remind me, even though I have everything traced out, as kind of a final eyeball tool to make sure it's appropriate. Uh, I just wanted to show you that little difference. So let's take a look at some of the tip work. The tips are a bada bing. They're a bitch. And... Before I even get too heavily into this, I want to remind everybody again. I'm working from two-dimensional reference trying to transform it into a three-dimensional object. It is not an easy task, obviously, we all know this. Um, and I'll be switching light here in a second to show you some of the, the finer nuances of this piece. This is uh, the index tip, and this was probably... I mean, they're all difficult in their own regard, to be sure. Uh, Am I, you know, I can't ever say this is 100% accurate, guys. I, I've always said that. I mean, you know, Mike's got the original glove, and I know that he knocks out copies from the, I guess he made templates from it, from, from what I, I've heard. And, you know, good for him, asshole. Love you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, if I had the original glove in front of me, I'm sure I would find things that I'm like, oh, really? Did I miss that? Or whatever. Um but I really am pretty comfortable with having gotten it to a very, very close degree of accuracy. From the most I'm ever going to get from 2D reference, from, you know, pictures. And, you know, yeah, there are hundreds of them, yeah. But, you know, and matching everything up that I have, everything seems to fit right. You know, I was able to, you know, stuff, stuff like here on, on the tip, I was able to get the, the blade jutting in properly with you know the housing overlapping it versus how each blade rests and is shaped into each other tip housing um you know, i can't do anymore and you know it, again it also looks very different depending on your screen aspect ratio it de depending on the light depending on all these things it looks thicker it looks thinner that's why i'm showing all these angles i mean and so here's where some of the advice comes in if you're looking at this middle tip look at how the light reflects over the volume over the surface volume of this tip. You know, it's not just about bending it over. It, 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 I, I, you're going to see me spending a lot of time really force forming this metal into rounded shapes between the creases and, and, and curving the bottom under on very selective segments. It's why when you look at the top of a piece like this, it seems to have a completely different shape than if, you know, as soon as you turn it over. And that's what really boggled my mind for so many years on this stuff, is how can it look one way if you're looking at the top, and as soon as you kind of, you know, rotate it over, it has a completely different shape. Well, it's, it's because the volume has been, think of it like water forcing, water volume inside a bag, you know? It pushes out, and, and it causes the surface of the bag to shape around it, and that's kind of the, and it may be a little vague, but that's how I do it. 
Um, that's how I see it. Here's the back plate, guys. I don't know if you thought I was going to show it to you, but I'm going to. This is how the Part 2, well, let's just call it the Becker clone, because the Part 2 has a little subtle difference to it. But this is the, how this back plate works. I'm giving you all the shots. So um, I hope you like it. You can probably see the, the bottom rivet hole there. I got a little overzealous with the with the drilling, and if you've noticed, it rides the rivet rides a little bit too low in all of the footage I've shown so far of the glove when it's been, you know, in its assembled form. And I'm well aware of that. And it's just because I I I, I opened up that hole too much, and it, it's just it rides down too low, and, and uh, so the rivet sits about two millimeters too low, almost to the bottom of the of the back plate. So I did notice that. And there's other little things that I'll talk about, like the right side of the pinky, um, the right side of the pinky knuckle. The, the fantail is uh, needs to be extended by about two millimeters around the rivet, um, but I you know I I decided not to mention that because I'll be doing it as I build it. So uh, uh, you know it's just one of those other little details that you you keep in mind <clears throat> uh, that I'm aware of. You know for people who are pointing stuff out and going oh well, he missed this he missed that and and that's cool and you can do that. Um, I'm sure I did miss something uh, somewhere, but I try not to. I try very hard not to.